Hello, and welcome to the podcast, Why You Don't Have an MSG Allergy. Seriously, you really don't. So first off, what is MSG? Monosodium glutamate is a salt of the amino acid glutamate and the mineral sodium. It is a white crystalline compound which enhances savory flavors and as such has been used in a wide variety of cooking techniques, though it is most strongly associated with Chinese cuisine. So how did we get the idea that MSG was bad for us? It started with a letter to the editor of the New England Journal of Medicine in 1968 written by Robert Homan Kwok. He suggested MSG, among other things, as the cause for a brief radiating numbness and palpitations he experienced following the consumption of Chinese food. His letter was completely anecdotal and offered no scientific evidence or study behind his claims, but because Dr. Kwok was a physician, many people took this as a scientific study. And since the Chinese restaurant syndrome outbreak that followed the letter, several single and double blind studies have failed to show any adverse response to MSG. Despite that, many people still cling to the idea that they are sensitive or allergic to monosodium glutamate. We're going to explain why that's not the case. First off, what happens to MSG when you eat it? As an ionic sodium salt, MSG completely dissociates in aqueous media. This means that it no longer remains as MSG once we ingest it. It becomes glutamate and sodium separate from each other. And the sodium and glutamate, glutamate that arise are chemically indistinguishable from sodium and glutamate that is already found in the body. In addition, we're going to get MSG from any protein source because virtually every protein source is also high in sodium and because glutamate makes up 6% of the amino acids in the typical protein, the 51 grams of protein that an average American eats every day is going to be converted into about 3.2 grams of glutamate. This is because dietary protein is broken down in our gut into the constituent amino acids for absorption. And of course, the sodium is also going to be in that food as well, which means any dietary protein is going to produce some amount of monosodium glutamate, much larger than any amount that would come from added glut monosodium glutamate in our diets. In addition, we can regulate the amount of glutamate that we have. If we try to avoid it, other amino acids can be converted into glutamate quite regularly. The metabolism of at least four other amino acids leads directly through that of glutamate. This works the other way around. Glutamate is a starting material for other amino acids. It is used with its interconversion with alpha-ketoglutarate as a transport of amine groups throughout the body. Alpha-ketoglutarate can also be used in the citric acid cycle as an energy metabolite which means, because this reaction is, ir is reversible, anything that can be put into the citric acid cycle can also be ultimately converted back to glutamate. So there's really no avoiding glutamate in our diet with the hopes of avoiding monosodium glutamate. Glutamate is also a major neurotransmitter. We need it. It is the precursor of another neurotransmitter, gamma aminobutyric acid. Glutamate is also necessary for the production of glutathione. The two major roles of glutathione is to be a water-soluble antioxidant and also as a phase two conjugate for xenobiotic metabolism. So what would happen if you were actually allergic to monosodium glutamate? Well, given the amounts of glutamate in the body already, you'd be undergoing an allergic reaction at all times. It would be unrelenting. It would also have the possibility to go into a potentially fatal anaphylactic reaction. Fortunately, you're not allergic to MSG, nor is anybody else you know. I hope this alleviates some of the fears you may have had regarding ingesting MSG. Thank you for listening.